second speaker, resource speaker. Our resource speaker is the chief executive officer of the Independent Perception and Research Hub, Bangladesh, a country director of IMPMRDIEO. She is proficient in his field of teaching profession. And he will be discussing the topic, Road to Understand Teaching, a Noble Profession. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's welcome our second speaker, Professor M.D. Sharriar Harvest. Professor. Good evening. Am I audible? Loud and clear? Yes. So uh, everyone clearly uh, listen to my voice. My voice is okay to everyone? Yes, Professor. Okay, yes. thank you. Uh, I am being honored to become a guest or uh, resource person as a speaker in this kind of international uh, conference. Uh, and also this kind of conference is also a valuable conference for the teacher, the faculties. So far, I believe that. And today, uh, uh, my topic is uh, Road to Understand Teaching, a Novel Profession. So I requested the uh, participant to mute your uh, microphone, please, because when I speak, then it will become, uh, if the noise is here, then I feel that uh, it will be a problem to listening to other people. Okay. So here we are here to understand about the teaching profession as a novel profession. And so far, we believe that teaching is a novel profession for us. And today is the day that uh, you are here to participate in the 10th International Conference on School leadership and teaching profession uh, 2021 and already uh, one of uh, the greatest speaker professor elizabeth already uh, spoke and uh, he said uh, she said about uh, the leadership and uh, various sort of thing now here in the moment uh, in my uh, lecture uh, you uh, we the topic is here to road to understand teaching a novel profession. So, if uh, we understand that why it is a novel profession, then uh, our great scholar Dr. A. P. G. Abul Kalam said, "Teaching is a novel profession which shapes the character and ability and the future of an individual." So teaching is the ability of teacher to impart their knowledge, skill, and their experience to their discipline. On the other hand, the career in teaching requires people who have conviction to nurture young minds and mind and the mode of them something great. Since time memorial professor profession of teaching as considered as one of the noblest profession. And it is so the educator also changes the society by giving their lecture, their norms, their value to the student by nurturing themselves. And if we understand that why this is a novel profession, then teaching is no doubt a novel profession because in this, profession, you give your volunteerism, or uh, it means that you are considered yourself as a heroism, especially when you are choose to teach the less privileged students, because the point is here that as a teacher, you are not always teach to the privileged student, also the less privileged student, which means that uh, when you teach, Everyone is a uniform body for you. No class, no bound is there. So 
now we want to speak something about the teaching duties, responsibilities, and minimum requirements of a teacher. Uh, so the point is there that at first, uh, the duties and re responsibilities of a teacher, you should must understand that what kind of responsibilities and duties you should have in your teaching profession. At first, uh, we just say the knowledge of the subject, because if you teach a subject which you have no knowledge, then it will become a very less important for you to understand the subject. And also you are able to give your lecture on that subject. So knowledge of understand of the subject is the most important part of a teacher. And now in this knowledge, what can you do? To have an expert knowledge of your subject area, to pursue the relevant opportunity to grow the professionalism and also keep up to date uh, about the current knowledge and research in the subject area. And this is also important. Knowledge also might be recent and might be the researchable knowledge you have to in, inside yourself. Then to plan, another point is come, that is the teaching. How can you plan your teaching? To plan and prepare appropriate assigned course and the lecture for the student, to conduct the assigned classes and the scheduled time, to demonstrate complete classroom instruction, to implement the designated curriculum. Uh, we also said about, uh, well, we we will uh, uh, show this kind of information in letter about the curriculum uh, to plan and implement effective classroom management, to design and implement an effective strategy to develop self responsibilities, and also to promote your student in terms of motivational power. So it means that each and every student has some motivational power themselves. So you are the teacher, you are the moderator. So it is your task to motiv uh, motivate themselves by motivating their intrinsic power. Now come to the point that in the teaching, you also encourage your student in active, in hands-on, creative problem-based learning, because problem-based learning solving now is very important for the student. If you are a teacher, only teach, teach, and teach, that will not become a valuable uh, content for your student, because if you give them some problem-based uh, learning, like to uh, understand something by uh, creating something by their analysis, by problem solving, then that will become a more important and this will be uh, helpful them in future in their career. To provide the opportunity for the student to access the current technology, resource and information, and also to provide the opportunity for the student to apply the practical uh, knowledge what they are learned. So to engage the student in creative thinking and also learning experience because learning experiment, experience is one of the vital part of a student life. To build up a student ability to work collaboratively with others and also to motivate themselves by self motivation and also to motivate themselves as an instructor, as a coach, as a learner, and also as an audience. Because as a teacher, you should have a power to learn from your student. Because always, if I say I know everything, then it is not the uh, true thing so far I understand. Because a student something uh, sometimes give us the lesson. So we are also a teacher, we are also a learner in our whole life. To maintain a safe and uh, ordinary environment conductive in learning and also to comply with requirements, safety and supervision of your student. And then how can you assign assignment? So assignment is a thing 
to uh, give your student uh, that how can they understand uh, this, well, what do you uh, listen, what do you uh, lecture, how, what's their response. So by giving them the assignment, this will become uh, helpful for them. And in the assignment, you have to communicate learning expectation from the student and to apply the appropriate multiple assignment tools and strategies to evaluate the promote the continuous intellectual development in the student. And also to assign the responsible uh, assignment which also be reasonable and also give some homework for the student to uh, do something in, from their home and to evaluate the student performance and objective to understand the timely manner and also record the report. And you must take some pop quizzes, some uh, assignment quiz and some uh, what is called midterm and final semester examination. And then you have to uh, understand the professionalism of a teacher because as a teacher, you have some professionalism inside you. To be punctual, available in the class during the class time and the office hour, and uh, you prepare and uh, maintain your course file and also take some notes every day uh, before you take your class. And also you participate responsibly in your university or your school improvement initiative and also demonstrate the timeliness and attendance for assigned responsibilities to work collaboratively with other professional and staff and also you have to provide the excess evaluate feedback from the professional manner and create and maintain a positive safe learning environment now the point is here, another point must be inside you that is good behavior to model honesty, fairness and ethical conduct, to model a caring attitude towards your student, to promote positive interpersonal relationship, to model the correct use of language, oral and written, and also to be a model to promote the empathy then also gender in ethnic, the religion, the culture, and also learning diversity of the student. To demonstrate skill when you're managing a student behavior and resolving disciplinary problem. So it is a duty for a teacher to become a model or become a role model for the student. And by their role model, the student will be benefited and a student create their life from you, from your social skillness, from your leadership and for, from your civic responsibility. Now the point is here that as a teacher, you must have to understand the specific deadline for your course specification, for your classroom activity report, for your course file, for your attendance, and also for the quizzes, assignment, and so on. Now the point is here that as a teacher, you must evaluate your uh, student fairly because if you are not fairly just, then this will be problem for your student because some of the students are, uh, they have the intrinsic, some of the students are extrinsic. So it means that some of them are near, not want to share their feelings with you. So they are just uh, quiet in the classroom. So you just uh, give uh, and nurture them and give your uh, experience, share your knowledge with them and motivate them. So then the student will be benefited from you. Now, another point is here, the teamwork. Uh, I, I want to show a video in this presentation slide, but it is not possible now. So in a teamwork, yes, it is an important part for you to become a person, a teacher 
work with teamwork. Because if you are not work in a teamwork, then it is possible that uh, you may uh, are not uh, accurately delivered your lecture up to date. And uh, so far, your organization or your institution, your university, uh, they wants to get from you the uh, appropriate work. They will not this. Uh, they will not get this kind of uh, work from you. So it is important to work as a uh, teamwork and always be a, become a leader for the teamwork and. When you have become a leader for the teamwork, then I think that this will be more uh, responsible, give you more responsible and uh, give you more learning behavior inside you. Now the point is here that teacher requirements and in the teacher requirement, uh, what we can understand. Uh, the school level teacher requirement minimum, you have the bachelor degree in teaching or in, in your relevant field. So some of the uh, institution wants the master degree and you have minimum two years experience as a teacher or as a, a co-teacher or assistant a lecturer or assistant teacher, and you have in-depth knowledge of teaching method and legal educational procedure. Outstanding written and verbal communication is very much important for you and well organized with excellent leadership ability is must be important for a teacher because teaching is a novel profession. So you must have that uh, excellent leadership ability to capture this profession and exceptional interpersonal and presentation skill because if you are not uh, presented or if you are not interpersonal then how can you feel uh, the students uh, minds how can you read the student feelings the behavior or their emotion and now come to the point of teaching method, uh, which is very much important uh, because uh, as a teacher, you must know about the teaching method or methodology because it's a uh, psychological thing so far we understand because in, if we uh, research the uh, previous history, then we uh, observe that the Skinner, the Grunder, the uh, Pagan, and the Boomers, they actually psychology the great teachers. They analyze the teaching method and give us some important method for teaching uh, behavior. So at first, the teaching method is started from the behaviorism. And in this theory, the learner is essentially clear state to state of shape the emotion of the people by understand their stimuli, their reaction in a positive and negative reinforcement. So here is the problem is here that sometimes we don't understand what our student wants. We just go to our class and give the lecture uh, we just write uh, something in the board and we have nothing to uh, do for the student. And if the, even some of us never ask the student, do you understand this thing? Do you understand that thing? And some of the student not responds uh, and some of the student responded. So at that moment, uh, the teacher say, no, uh, please sit down, please. Uh, we have a lot of uh, education or a lot of study in today's class. But so far, you must understand the reaction and positive and negative impact of your student minds. Then you have to understand the social cognitive theory. Uh, in the social cognitive theory, you must understand that how the student is grow up from their childhood to their uh, 12 or 16 years old time. So in this 
uh, social cognitive theory, you have to understand uh, some stages. There are four stages. Actually, the first stage is called the sensor-motor stage. And this stage actually begin from the birth of a baby to the 18 months of time. So the second stage also uh, is a, uh, the point is here that the second stage is started from the age of two to seven, and the third stage is started from the seven to 11, and the final stage is started from the 16 to end of the life. So these are the stages actually uh, uh, mentioned uh, in the social cognitive theory. And uh, this is uh, one important stage of sensor motor. In this stage, uh, when the uh, child birth, you can understand that uh, what kind of behavior they will go, uh, they will achieve when they are grown up. Some of are very sh feeling shy. Some some uh, baby uh, are creative. Some baby uh, copying uh, the another one. So in this stage, you can understand this kind of thing as a teacher. And basically, most of the important stages that is the student is seven to eleven when they go to their school. And uh, in this stage, uh, they are actually, uh, uh, this is called operational stage and logically and uh, develop their empathy during uh, concern their operational stage. Hello, sir. Hello, Hello. professor. I think uh, the share screen is now ready. Okay. Okay. Okay, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, it is. It is this, this. This is my one. So I think. What? Uh, what slide number? Okay. Wait, let me, yeah, what uh, slide number, oh, Professor? Uh, okay, can uh, can you uh, uh, can you share the slides? Okay, fine. So now, uh, actually, uh, I am on the slide number. Please go down. Please go down. Slide number, slide. yes, yes, uh, the teaching method, yes, the teaching method, uh, then yes, uh, I am on slide number 25. All right, thank you very much. Yes, 25, yes. So uh, uh, next slide, please. I, I think I already uh, said uh, the slide. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, I, uh, so in this slide, yes, you, uh, we also cover up this. Next slide, please. Yes, so uh, this is the slide, uh, the operational space. So far, we understand that it is a very important uh, part for, for the teacher to understand the students' minds. Uh, okay, uh, next slide, please. Next. Okay, so this is the pictorial thing that in the sense of motor stays, the operational stays, the formal operational stays. Now you can understand that, that uh, how can the mental behavior of a child, uh, uh, we said the student, they are actually the child, they are our ch child. So you said that in the sense so motor, the child beginning to interact with the environment, then in the, uh, the learning something with the conversation with us, then in the operational stage, uh, they are beginning uh, the symbol that wow, wow, how can they represent themselves in the society and in the formal stage so far, we understand that. And uh, in this uh, second pictorial thing, you can easily understand this thing. Okay, next slide, please. I I think uh, we already covered a bit. Yes. So uh, this is a, another slide that uh, the uh, 
person or a people, how can they develop themselves uh, in a uh, natural way, in a musical way, in a body kind of state, then a linguistic, an interpersonal, then logical, mathematical. So these are the quality of a student. And as a teacher, you must understand that in my student, this kind of qualities they have. Some of the students like music. Some of the students like uh, physical work. Some of the students like mathematics. Some are avoid the mathematics. So as a teacher, you must understand their psychology, their uh, sense of motor or their uh, behavior. And as a teacher, it's a novel profession and you are a leader. So it is most important for you to understand this kind of thing. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay, this is another point that constructivism is another way to understand the um, theories of educational theories because in this way the more the most important part is here the activity learning and in the activity learning is one of the vital part now in this world because when many of the employer ask me that sir please give us some student so when i provided a student to them i asked them that what are the requirements huh? you want from the student huh? so uh, at that time they are asked that uh, a student must be active in uh, some work. So I said, uh, you need the CGPA. So they said, no, uh, we don't want any kind of, CGPA is not a matter. If, if the student is not workable with my organization and don't understand the point of my organization work, then I don't uh, want that kind of high CGPA student. So this is one important part for the teacher because uh, if we already, always say that, you become a good uh, student by your CGPA. No, I think it is not right because if your student are able to understand to uh, solve a problem in a society, in a road, then they is most eligible student for the society, for the organization. And if the student uh, get the high CGPA and uh, he has no knowledge in a practical way, then I think in the future, uh, uh, no organization will uh, bring him or her for their employee. Okay, next slide, please. Yes, so here we see that uh, in this uh, video, a student is active, learning many important lessons on their own and intrinsically motivated to learn. So by this picture, yeah, we understand that he has a uh, interest to become a doctor. So this is a teacher part to understand that how can you uh, understand the student that what he want to become a doctor, a teacher, or uh, an engineer. So uh, this, uh, as a teacher, it is your duty to understand your student that how can your student get and obtain the knowledge from your class. Next slide, please. Okay, so it is one of the important uh, slides. Uh, the participants are here. Uh, you can uh, understand that the universal design for learning. And in the universal design for learning, I think uh, now is the time for every teacher to uh, prepare their lecture by universal design for learning method. Uh, I think in the next slide, we have a pictorial thing. Uh, yes. So in the universal teaching method, you must understand the engagement, the representation, and the action and expression of your student. And as a teacher, you have the access to build up then intelligent, then goal. So these are the point you must understand from your student because teaching is a novel profession and you are a 
leader, you are a teacher, you are a motivator, and you are a capable person to teach your student. So in the engagement, you just um, uh, observe that there is recurring, uh, recurrent in the uh, interest, then uh, sustaining effort, uh, then self-regulation, and in the representation, in the excess, you see the perception and also the physical action. So by providing this kind of um, a pictorial figure to understand you that how can you understand your student minds you if you see that uh, active network the why of learning then the recognition network the what of learning and the strategic network how of learning so why what and how as a uh, teacher uh, if you ask yourself that why i give this lecture what is the purpose and how can I deliver it this lecture, then I think this will be benefited for you to prepare your lecture plan. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, now another point is here. These are the uh, points so far we discussed about the psychological behavior. Now the point is here, the teaching method actually now divided in traditional versus modern. And in the traditional teaching method, you can understand that uh, so far we go to the class, we uh, write down something and the st uh, student does uh, read, 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 read. So far they understand or not, they, uh, say they just read and read and read. And in the examination paper, they write what they read, what they memorize. But in the traditional way, uh, is, is study and memorize. You see here, the point is here, the study and memorize. So now the uh, world is change. And as a teacher, you have to change your pattern also. Now the po point is here, if you are only think that is study and memorize is a teaching pattern, then I'm extremely sorry, the world is now totally changed because now we want analyzing, we want evaluation. Next slide, please. Yes. Yeah. So uh, you see them in the modern uh, teaching, the progressive modern teaching, educational are now more active. The more progressive education is here. So progressive means activity-based learning and activity-based learning is very much important. I uh, uh, repeated this word activity-based uh, activity learning because so far I've worked with many uh, um, international organization, many universities, and there I understand that they want the activity-based learning. So far uh, uh, in the World Bank, they uh, started a project of HECAIP and under this project, there is a IQC is a the, the institutional quality assurance cell. So in this project, I work as a chairman of that project, and I understand that they want the activity with learning now is very much important for the student, not the traditional learning. And using the questioning, the explaining, the demonstrating, and also collaboration techniques. Next slide, please. Uh, so uh, I have no option to uh, show this kind of video now. Uh, I hope next time, uh, please, next slide, please. So now is a point is here that uh, tools for your digital classroom. Now we are actually in a digital wave uh, actually run inside us because now I talk uh, with you, you see us the, uh, uh, this kind of virtual conference. So it's the kind of digital way, like a technology. Technology give us everything. Uh, so far, the technology uh, also waste our time. Um, uh, but if we uh, deliver it, or if you, if we um, run this technology in a selective way, then I think uh, a student will be benefited from this kind of technology, like digital classroom. 
Uh, so in the digital classroom, uh, they have uh, many kind of uh, option like Classcraft, Adobe, uh, Google Classroom is very much important for you. And also the YouTube, YouTube also have a learning classroom uh, for the teachers so far, I understand, because many of the professional uh, give their lecture in the YouTube. So uh, I hope that uh, yeah, your institution or your university or school uh, develop this kind of classroom uh, in your, uh, uh, for the student. Please, uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, these are the details of the uh, classroom. I think uh, I, I will not go through this thing. Uh, uh, please uh, skip it. Uh, I, I, I provided all the uh, information in this slide. So if this slide is provided to the participation, they will get that everything. So please, uh, next slide, please. Yes. So now is very much important point to come to us. That is pedagogy and andalusy, which why are many getting wrong their learning strategy? Like in these two picture, the baby also learn, and the adult person also learn. Now the point is here: their learning method is change. So as a teacher if we are not understanding that what kind of learning strategy we applied in our student, then we will become a great loser in our future because our student is our leader in the future. So next slide, please. You see, the, uh, uh, that is a difference between the andagogy and the pedagogy is very much uh, important to learn for the uh, teacher. Uh, like pedagogy, the learner depend on the teacher. And the andagogy, the learner is depending on self. So now if you are a school teacher, or if you are a university teacher, if you apply the pedagogical theory on your student, then the learner depend on you. So you have to understand, you have to learn yourself and you have to uh, shape up yourself each and every day because in a pedagogical way, the learner is depend on you. On the other hand, it is depends that in the childhood uh, learning strategy depends on pedagogy uh, and uh, the uh, upper learning strategy actually depends on andagogy. So next slide, please. Here we can see that the student advice once they have completed the necessary step and child learn are told what they are need to master a topic in order to move into the next one. So the child here is always come to the point of child and now the andagogical thing you say the instructor the learner don't advise to another topic they want to learn something or grab something so next slide please next please okay these are the modern pedagogical learning strategy the 10 important pedagogical learning strategy is here so i think as a teacher uh, you should read this thing properly because uh, here you see the crossover learning, the analytical of emotion, the adaption teaching, then also the computational learning and text-based learning, many things is mixed in the modern pedagogy. So next slide, please. I uh, think that I already provided all this material in this slide. So I hope that you will be able to read this thing by yourself and you must be understand uh, after you read because you are a teacher, you have that capacity and capability. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, next slide.
next please okay uh, one point is here please uh, go to the uh, uh, previous slide oh, one point is here that is uh, adaptive teaching is one of the important part and in the in the next slide please uh, next slide yes analytics of emotion it is very important part because in this uh, manner you can understand the cognitive ex aspects of the learner so you understand the what's your learner know what's your learner have inside them so i think as a teacher you must uh, understand the analytics of the emotion of your uh, students next please Okay, now come to the point. So far, I already told that, that curriculum. So now it's a very much uh, uh, confusing thing that what is syllabus and what is curriculum. As a faculty, it is one of the important uh, part uh, for you. Uh, uh, may I ask uh, the uh, moderator that how many times left? Yeah, you still have uh, less than five minutes. So. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so uh, the syllabus and curriculum. So it is uh, very much important for the teacher to understand because in the syllabus, you uh, it is a document only consists the topic and the uh, portion that you are studied in your. Uh, um, uh, let's see, uh, in your class and in a sub. Uh, Syllabus considered as a guideline. Next okay. slide, please. And in a curriculum, it is a total guideline for the academic content that uh, what are the topics, uh, what are the uh, topics you uh, studied, how can the student get their uh, grade in these uh, topics, what are the chapter you covered what's the uh, teaching method you applied and uh, what kind of uh, lesson or uh, assignment you can provide. So in the curriculum, you have total uh, guideline for the course for the uh, studies. So I uh, hope that uh, in your country, you are uh, maintain the curriculum in the institution. Next slide, please. So these are the difference between curriculum and syllabus. I think uh, you will read it in uh, you know, when you get this slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I have a video, so no video is here. Next slide, please. And uh, the point is here, what we learned that the seed planner is equal to the teacher. So as a seed planner, you are the teacher. When you plant a seed, then it has become a tree and give us the shelter also and protect us from the different kinds of hazard. So as a teacher, you must build up your student slightly, slightly and slowly, slowly in an active way so that your student will become a teacher, a manager, a senior officer, a educator, and must protect this society, this world, this environment. So, so far, I think that uh, I already covered most of the thing. And this is happy Friday uh, for all. Let's the weekend begin in your country. And it is the end. I, I, uh, I have some videos, but uh, it is not possible to show this kind of video uh, here now. So I hope that next time I will show it. So thank you very much. Uh, I give my floor to the moderator, please. All right. Thank you very much, Professor and Dishar Parvis, for that very informative and inspiring message. Moving on, let's present the certificate of recognition to our second speaker. Okay, let me share the screen to you. Mr. Wen Ms. Wendelin Din Din, kindly well, turn off your microphone, please. All right. 
and we would like to request the chairman and founder of the Lead Philippines Global to do the honor in presenting the certificate of recognition to our resource speaker. Yeah, first I'd like to, uh, yeah, of course, this is our second speaker. I'd like to present the certificate of recognition to our uh, resource speaker, Professor Dr. M.D. Sariar Parves. During the 10th International Conference on School Leadership and Teaching Profession with the theme from Education 4.0 to 5.0 School Leaders and Teachers Dynamic Engagement in the New Normal. Signed, Dr. Ken Paul M. Espinosa, Lead President, Mario Silucero, Founder and Chairman. Let's give a big round of applause to Professor Dr. M. D. Thank you very much, Professor M. D. Sharivar Farvis. Thank you.